the point you were. If they burn you were too. You don't stand up, come and meet me. You don't say do anything. You just no. talk for nothing. Oh. No, I have never smoked before. I just know you see that boy don't change. Holy Shaolin Temple. Ni, ni, your ni, son ni. don't talk to Ninja. You gotta disobey your parents, Abby. Eh? No, no, sir. You both say parents are guardians, say what? It's a manufacturer agency. Magbeti Yadan. From what? now on, Nimbe is my favorite cousin. But for all the money we are spending on you to go to school, you waste everything for him. You Enough. hire Enough! Let me tell him how he has failed as a father. But this is home now. Coming together is the beginning, staying together is progress, and working together is a success. This is Intellect, Youth with a Nation at Heart. My name is Daniel Abdaja, and today we travel to the city of Abel Buta in Ogun State, where we are going to be talking about the hospitality industry. More importantly, we're placing our focus on the event planning industry. And joining us today is the CEO of NPU Event, Ebulo Motaeshe. My name is Taeshe Ebulomo Bolo Atifer, and I'm the CEO of MP Events and also the convener of my grand event. And um, I graduated from Taishula University of Education, my first degree, and I had my second degree at the University of Lagos, where I studied English language for both degrees. I have two beautiful girls. I started way back with my um, cousin, who was into the events industry way back where I used to live, before I even got married. And I like the fact that we would tell me, ah, if we, ah, there's an event, I want you to bring your girls for hostessing and all of that. So we started off as an ushering company and um, we decided to go into events and because it's a way for me to interface with people while making sure they have a good time at their event. So it was just an opportunity for me to make it better and put more professionalism into it. <music> For you to have a successful event, you need at least not less than about 20 vendors to make sure that you have everything coming together. And gone are those days whereby the event planner is the decorator, the event planner is the uh, florist, the event planner is the caterer, she's also the one making the baking the cakes and all of that. Gone are those days. So this time, um, it's easier for you to excel, it's easier for you to even get more jobs, so you even get more clientele by collaborating with other people. Like if, if, if for a successful event company, if you have, for example, if you have about five events for a weekend, we don't expect you to do all of it by yourself. So calling other people, other colleagues who you trust or who um, you're sure of their professionalism, you can also call them to come on board. So uh, collaboration is the in thing and that's what everybody's been preaching uh, for a couple of um, years now. Okay, um, well, the event industry is a pretty funny one because even in the 20th century that we are now, even in 2019, a lot of people still don't see a need why you should have an event planner or why you should have an event coordinator or even as low as you having an hostess at your event. A lot of people still don't believe. Uh, some people will just say, oh, let me call some people from my church, I'll call some people from my streets. They still don't see the value or the necessity in having um, an event plan at their event so that's a major challenge for you to convince them and also let them know that oh there's a need for you to do so but i mean it's been easier for us at our company because a lot of our jobs are based on referrals so it means you if you get referrals for more jobs it means you're doing well so for us it has not been i mean if we have new clients yes we have to still explain to them why the value we're bringing to the table and why they should hire us of course we have to defend that trusting vendors now or Planners with um, their funds or their finances sometimes is another challenge because you have to now explain to the clients why you won't have to do this and all of that. Meanwhile, also expansion in any kind of business, which um, the event planning industry is not an exception, is for you to get funds from the bank and all of that. Sometimes, you know, you have um, um, a lot of things that they will give to you, collateral this, collateral that. So, I mean, it's a bit of a challenge, but um, thankfully some banks have been doing uh, a lot of good things, loans for women in business, which has also helped. Also, the issue of staffing is another uh, big one. And, um, you know, sometimes you have to be sure of 
the people who come into your company to work for you and in the vet industry anybody will just want to come in because of the fame the glamour the oh when we go to this event we'll meet people and all of that a lot of people come into that event industry for that purpose so sometimes staffing is an issue when they come in in six months and they're not getting the kind of vibes they want to get they are going out so all your investments in training and all of that is going down the drain you know another challenge is also professionalism a lot of people would say oh they did um, a whatsapp training you know for three weeks three weeks whatsapp training and the next thing you're seeing is their event planners they are printing cards and all of that so what's what's the rule that says oh you're going to be successful or you're um, well you're well grounded enough to go into the kind of business you want to go to which is the event planning business so as a matter of fact a lot of associations are, are in the country right now in which i'm a part of um, that's the association of professional party planners and organizers in nigeria that's upwell and um, one of our um, goal in that organization or in that association is to provide standardization like there's standard in the event on industry and stepping up the goal anybody cannot just come in and say oh i wake up one morning i've gone for a class somewhere i just want to be a planner you know so these are one of the major challenges facing event planners basically but for us as a company um well we also have our down times you know there's off peak periods and there's um uh peak periods so when you have um, the new year now, it's not, it's not usually um, a peak period, it's a downsize, you know. So when you have maybe from June downwards, that's when everybody wants to quickly get married, people are burying somebody, something is happening, you know. It's a middle time, so that's part of the challenges. So what, what we do here as a company is that when there are no jobs, we create events. And that's what I tell people. If you say there are no events, you create one for yourself. The future of the event industry is a very very um, I would say a successful one a bright one or a bright future we have a bright future because the truth of the matter is that everybody will continue to celebrate there'll be there'll be parties every weekend it's no longer a weekend um, um, thing anymore you know how people who have their events on Mondays you have corporate events you have social events you have conferences you have um, um, I mean, different sporting events, everybody comes up with something. So it means that for every event or for every gathering, there would be an event planner. There will be somebody to put it together. The people who to render services, which are the vendors. So definitely, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, the events industry is going to die. It's, it's an industry now that has come to stay. We can only work towards standardization and professionalism and making sure that um, we have the right people doing the right businesses. And we have professionals who are offering this business and not just mushroom companies or mushroom individuals. If event planning industry is your way and is what you want to do, go out for it. Get a mentor, somebody who has been in the industry for a very long time to teach you and train you all the basic things that you need to know or to grow in, in the, I mean, it's a saturated industry already. So for you to uh, be picked amongst the many people, there must be something different you're bringing to the table that every other person will not be doing. Wow, it's been an amazing time here in the city of Abel Kuta Ogun State. You know that for more information, you can log on to our website, www.intellect.com.ng to follow us for more updates on what we have in stock for you. This is Intellect, youth with a nation at heart. Good day, viewers. My name is Omwe Busimili Antunima, your host for today for the Intellect TV show, Youths That Have the Nation at Heart. So we'll be speaking about the need of empowering women. So today in the panel, um, having very amazing people, very interesting. We've been having lots of um, interactive discussion backstage. So I'll just, without much ado about nothing, I'll just allow them introduce themselves. So. What's your name? I'm Bukola Baluku. Bukola Baluku. I'm to the gentleman. I'm Femi Ojo. Mr. Femi Ojo. And? I'm Ifes Sarumi. Ifes Sarumi. How are you all doing today? Thank you very well. Okay, we just watched an interview with the CEO of NPU Events in person of Ms. Ebulomo Taishaye. So what do you think about all she said? That's just a brief summary. I'll be starting with you, Mr. Femi Ojo. Okay, what I got from the pitch, from her pitch, was the fact that um, women need to collaborate, and uh, because of the fact that um, collaborates actually collaboration makes you to drive more results. Apart from the results, it helps you. It's easing things for you. It's less. Um, there's actually less of thinking time for you. So when you, when you actually bring 
um, different people from different sector or from diff different backgrounds, rather, in the same sector together, you drive more results. So that's it. Okay, because I remember when she made mention of um, when you have an event and you're having, let's assume you have close to five events in a weekend. You can't do that all by yourself. Definitely. Yeah, so you need to collaborate with your colleagues and all. Okay, thanks for bringing that to mind. So if I to you. Okay, so I learned that um, it's very important for women to have access to finance to be able to bring their dreams to reality. Okay, okay, and Bukola? Okay, um, one thing I saw is Ebo is someone who is trying as much as possible to make impact in her own little way, and she's a woman. So um, I think it's just more like encouraging other women, no matter where you find yourself and no matter what it is. You have that um, capacity, you have all the energy and uh, all the resources within you just maximize it to become who you are because yeah. definitely she started from somewhere and she's been very good. Okay, um, so I will be asking you guys this question. Do you think that women are being, like the society supports women to be their best in whatever field they find themselves, starting from politics to tech to art to fashion to anything? Do you think the society is supportive enough for women like, when a woman says, I want to do this, do you think that we are not stereotypical to say, you can't do this because you're a woman, you can't do this. So do you think, okay. Okay, um, I would say there's a whole lot of barriers against women in the Yes, let me put it. Uh, Studying from politics, into business, into um, even tech. Just name it. There's a whole lot of barriers against women. And I feel it's because of kind of society we'll find ourselves. Nigeria itself alone is um, a good we run a patriarchal kind of system of the uh, you know, government. And um, that's why you have women really relegated to the back. Now, uh, we just had a law that was just, um, you know, annulled by a, Supreme, uh, by a federal high court in Lagos. And this has to do with a police officer who is a woman. If she wants to get married, she has to take permission from, her, from the commissioner to actually get to get married to the person she wishes to get married to. Now, you know, a, a police officer called on a program that was on and the man said the reason why that is done is most of the time uh, women tend to talk about whatever it is that they have discussed at work to their husbands and some of them probably are not, um, some of them are found wanting, when I mean wanting, probably they are criminals or they are aiding criminals. Okay. Now, I don't think that's just a woman who does that. A man too can go home as well and go and relate to his wife, whatever it is that has been done at work. Yeah, so, to so I think professionalism is what is needed. No, it doesn't have to do with gender. There is someone you also mentioned that for six years she's been trying to get permission to get married to the person. Permission? She hasn't gotten it. I don't know what it is, the reason why. But I feel there's just so much laws that are in place or there are so many, um, so many things that are just in place to impede the woman from progressing. But thank God we have so many, uh, you know, awareness going out so much now. We have so many NGOs. The government is always trying to see in the direction of a woman, not just being in the house, but also being in the limelight. Because the impute of women too is very much important in having a successful country, a successful business. Because women actually formulate about half of Nigeria's population, the world population itself. So if you don't carry them along, there's a problem. Okay. Thanks for that. So if uh, what to you? So post-colonial era, I think women were to be seen but not heard. So your voice is relegated by a male authoritative figure in your life. That could be your father, your brother, your partner. As of recent years, let's say like 10 to 20 years, people are waking up to feminism and even accepting feminism and the fact that we need to be more um, intentional about gender equality. So you see online there's campaigns like, oh, um, the Me Too movement, whereby people actually expose women are exposing their experiences whereby they've been abused or subjected to, to violence. And now that women around the world are rallying to get their support. And people, because, because of that, there's now um, laws and policies being passed to say, okay, let's safeguard our women in, at work, at home, on the streets. So, but 50 years ago, we didn't, we didn't even have social media. So back then, you talk about it like in you know spaces like this, not outside. It's not a thing that we just talk about. Oh, women empowerment. Women are to be in the house. You cook, you clean, satisfy your husband. That's it. You don't really have a vision. If you have a vision, hopefully you have a partner that will actually support you. If not, you keep it neat, keep it pretty. 
So as of recent, we've been more enlightened towards Amazing. female empowerment and women advancement. Okay, thanks for that. So to you, Mr. Femi, you've been moving. <laughs> like you have something to say. Okay, let's hear um, it. Fantastic question there. I would say, from my perspective, uh, we need to change the narrative. I would say to you that, uh, okay, we are in a balanced and um, an equal gender um, um, century. The truth is, I will give you um, data of what have actually happened this year for you to know how women are actually carried along and um, how we feel that why I know women are the enemies to themselves too. I'll give you, um, earlier this year, Microsoft actually brought on board, encourages, uh, encouraged women, and um, they actually had about um, 100 developers to themselves. Um, Angela did the same, just 2019. And in 2019, we have a lot of women that actually uh, went on for February pools, and um, they're actually on seat right now. And um, one, thing is, one thing is, if you look at the women, they are not ready to collaborate. So <laughs> there's actually opportunity out there for the women, sincerely. There's actually opportunity. This year alone has actually empowered like 30 young minds that women, female yeah, female, have personally actually had to their lives when I'm trying to train them on robotics. So, so what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm driving out is the fact that there are opportunities out there for the women. So we don't need to now, the narrative I'm trying to say is to encourage women to support women. So guys, we'll be watching an interview with an expert in the industry. We'll get to hear what this person has to say. And after that, we'll be coming back to join our panelists to round off completely for today's segment. So please stay tuned. My name is Selena Adeshola Nodipe, and I'm the publisher for Ladies in Business magazine. And um, the magazine is actually meant for female entrepreneurs and all women doing one business or the other. And um, Ladies in Business magazine actually stands for everything and anything that has to do with women, that has to do with female entrepreneurs, because we want to help them to develop from stage one to stage 10 in a situation whereby they can be able to find their balance and be able to you know, survive their training of how they can sustain their business operations. It's not been an easy thing. That is why this platform, Ladies in Business Magazine, has actually come on board to make it a smooth sale so that they can know where to rough and tumble and where to you know, meet up at the middle of any issue that they are going out with. And um, so far, so good. Lots of female have been coming out, doing excellently well doing fantastic thing because it's not like before where we have you know people that are not well skilled that are not well educated or literate about one thing or the other but right now you find out that lots of women are coming out to do that particular thing they are passionate about and therefore it has made the trend to be a consistent one and more developing organizations, the government, and individual corporates, you know, the banking sector also have been coming up. And also, we at Ladies in Business Magazine, we actually have this training platform for them to develop and um, give them that training particularly that they wanted or I mean that will actually take them to the next step. If you can look around your community, look around your society, there will be something for you as a woman, as a lady that you can do for you to have an impact, not only having an impact, at the end of the day, it will be something that will bring you know, profit into your pocket and you'll be able to take care of yourself as well. So if we can actually sit down, think, meditate very well, for inside every problem lies the solution. And once there is a solution, that means at the end of the day, there's a good profit for you. So youths, ladies, women, you don't go lazy, find something important for you to do and the sky is your limit. Thank you. So welcome back, guys. I'm sure you must have learned. I'm sure this person, um, the person you watch broadened your opinion about this particular amazing topic. So we'll be going up to round off the topic and we'll be going back to our panelists. Okay, so guys, back to the um, major concern we got out here for, which is women in business. Do you think, because I remember when Ebuloma was saying something, she made mention about getting loans. Do you think the society or the banking industry or government is even making it um, easy or affordable, sort of? So I'll start with you first. Okay, so on one hand, I believe that the private sector, so the banks, are starting to realise that they need to make more financial incentives towards women, especially because they have um, more 
they, the, their concerns when it comes mm -hmm. to like raising finance are literally more or less more. Um, they need to pay more attention to them essentially because they have a different. They have different factors affecting them. For example, now, as a, again, this is a system. The society we live in is a very patriarchal society. So, from the past thirty or forty years, most times, when women need support, they go and ask their male counterparts. So that could be your husband, your father, so and so. So, for example, now the bank will tell you, okay, if you want a loan, you need collateral. So that means you need maybe like property, which is good collateral, right? But most times, the deed of the, the deed of the house is in your husband's name. So you have to get permission from your husband to get um, collateral. But now, what if this, your husband doesn't even support you? Now you're stuck. Now you have to go and get another kind of loan that has very high interest. You'll never be able to pay it back. But thankfully, I, I believe um, Access Bank, they have this loan called the W Initiative Loan, which um, promises to empower women who have, um, who have a business already but need, some, yeah, but need some aid. And I believe the interest is less than 10% or so. I have to go and Google that. But so I know Access is doing something, and I know Equibank is doing that too. So, but for the government side, I believe, I have, on the other hand rather, for the government, I don't think that they're doing enough as they can for women to raise finance, based on the fact that I don't really see any policies that's geared towards like trying to safeguard that women aren't making financial risks, because most of the time they have more things to consider. They have their children to consider. They have to consider the fact that if this fails, what do they have to fall back on? Do they have maybe um, even educational, and I can actually give them something else to even go and work as if nice. that business doesn't work out for them. So I feel like the government could do better in terms of creating policies that would actually encourage and support women to have access to loans that are low interest and, you know, even to the point whereby it's not, it's, it's not too capital intensive as well. So Bukola, you were about saying something. Okay, um, I would say there's still a lot more that needs to be done. Okay. Constitutionally, both men and women have access to have the opportunity to have access to loans. But you know, uh, just like I said earlier, there's so much uh, barriers against women. Against women. You know, there is in in the eastern part of Nigeria. I would say that some women are actually used as collateral to actually get some loans. Okay. Your date. Your date. So um, there, there's still so much that needs to be changed. There is a lot that still needs to be changed. Our tradition. There's so much. Uh, so in all, you're saying mentality. Yes, has mentality to be changed. First of all, our tradition. Now, women literacy too has to really be put into place. Educating okay. the woman. Now, there's so many out of school children, girls particularly, who don't have education, and now it's because uh, um, we have issue of insecurity and some of those things. Girls, women actually need to get educated. More okay. awareness needs to be made, so that those people who are not even literate, that women need to know that yes they have the opportunity to go out there and get some of this loans then get to understand what the procedure is that is the reason why you need to go back to the um, to to the drawing board uh, i think education is one of those things we're lacking right now so it's so not when you say it's drawing board and education are you just speaking of educating the women or educating the whole society yeah we we need to we need to increase the value we place on our women okay so That's you mean the most important the thing society? so that we can see how the entity, they how how important they are to us. They have value to offer. Okay. The same way a man has the value to offer, they, they do have a value to offer. So I respect the fact that um, a woman has value. I respect the fact that a man has value. So yeah. it doesn't mean like um, the perspective of the narrative is coming from a woman. It doesn't mean it's actually, um, it's actually not better than what a man better is going to become. So I become. think we need to change the perspective about that. So okay. it drives us more closer to more Nigeria we want to see. Okay, so shortly before we wrap up, who is a career woman? What does that word career woman mean, Bukola? Okay, I think it's just um, the society saying, oh, the woman who is trying to go for her goal, the woman who is trying to go for her purposes is classified as career woman. There's nothing like career man. It's because a woman has decided, okay, this is my goal, I'm trying to pursue it and pursue it to the letter. That's why we have in quotes career woman. A man who is trying to fulfill his own purpose or trying to pursue his own goal. It could, it, 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 it could be named career man. But okay. does the society name tag them career no, man? No, no, no. no. It, it, <laughs> okay, no, so, no, okay. Sorry, what Bukhla is trying to say is that in society, we don't have career, career man as a term because 
we expect men to go for their parents, but women is like, ah, you two, no, you two, yeah. no. uh, uh, like, that, that's, that's, that's the point. Mm. And let's not lie, the reason why you can't say that, no, it's for both genders, both genders are equal in that sense, because you can't say career man, because people expect men to go and do these things. People don't expect women to leave their children alone, leave their own, um, you know, sacrifice their own um, goals to to make people happy. Like, we expect it to just stay and make everyone happy. Everyone happy. Okay, I, I need to I need to shock you today. Uh, my mentor is a woman, okay. and um, amazingly, she's a career woman, and she 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 is actually able to balance her home and to balance what she does. She's a she politician. Well, really so 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 I need to I need you to understand. For me to for me to say my, my mentor is a woman, it goes a long way. I've learned so much. From my own perspective, I've looked at what this person is saying and I've looked at what the other person is saying. But sadly, we have to wrap up. So guys at home, thank you for your time. We look forward to having another set of wonderful panelists and see you same time next time. Hello everybody, welcome to the Business Crest today. My name is God Queen Aneke. 70% to 90% of the females out there today know a lot about makeup. There's a whole lot of makeup products, there's a whole lot of makeup artists, and everybody knows about makeup. Well, I'm going to pick my interest today on the popular Mary Kay. Mary Kay Ash was a businesswoman and the founder of Mary Kay Cosmetics. She got married at the age of 17 to her first husband and she had three kids. Then she worked from a home product. Along the line, she had to resign to start up her own business with the support of her husband. That is a great one. I'm here to pitch it to you today that you could start anything with the support of anybody, especially when it's coming from a loved one. That is a plus, trust me. Support is needed in every area of our lives today. It's going to go a long way in your lives because sometimes success depends on the support of anyone or everyone around you. Thank you very much. Please do not forget to register on our website for the Startup 100 before it ends. And don't forget, for more information, visit all our social media platforms. Thank you so much. Bye.